So if we want to reduce our carbon footprint, then we can either not use electricity as much as possible, or we can try to replace something that's inefficient with something that's more efficient, that does the same job, but uses less electricity. And the example we're gonna use in this class is with uh, light bulbs. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna learn a little bit about different types, types of light bulb technology, and then we'll do some math problems on how to um, uh, calculate how much carbon you would save uh, by swapping out different types of light bulbs. So right now on the market for a consumer, there's three basic types of light bulbs. There's the incandescent, the compact fluorescent, and the light emitting diode, also known as LEDs. Okay, so incandescent, these things have been around since the late 1800s. These are the, the of all the things in your house that use electricity, if you have an incandescent light bulb, it is the most obsolete by far, okay? Um, and the way it works is that there's this little wire in here called the filament, it's made of tungsten. And electricity flows through this wire and it gets so hot that it glows. Now, it turns out they're very, very inefficient. And you can think of it as like a heater that happens to make some light. So if you go up to a 60 watt or 100 watt light bulb or even a 40 watt light bulb and you, you try to put your hand on it, you can't, it's, it's, it's too hot. It's mostly just making heat instead of light. So if you did the math, which we're not gonna do, it's like about 1% efficient. So if you put 100 watts in, you're getting one watt of light out and all the rest is heat. Now, pros, um, they're very cheap to make. So like, I don't know, 25 cents a piece or something like that. And there's a lot of people who think this is the way light bulbs should look. Uh, they like the look of this style of light bulb, okay? Um, but cons, very, very inefficient. So then in starting in the 40s, people started uh, making fluorescent lights. And at first there were these long tubes, about eight feet long. And then people figured out how to miniaturize it so that you can fit them in a small socket. And inside this, this is a glass tube that has a little tiny amount of mercury in it, like a milligram of mercury. And this funny white plastic base here has a high voltage power supply. And what it does is when a light goes on, it excites the mercury uh, atoms and the electrons, the outer electrons in the mercury, as they jump back and forth between their different orbitals and that produces light. And it's much more efficient than an incandescent light bulb. So this is a big improvement over the incandescent lights. Uh, but the, pro the problem is, um, is that it has a little bit of mercury. Mercury is very poisonous, as we learned in an earlier lecture. So when this bulb is burned out, you're not supposed to just throw it away, because if it goes in the landfill and then the glass breaks, and then the mercury gets out and it gets into the groundwater. So disposal is a big problem with compact fluorescents. Uh, but they are more efficient. They use less electricity. So, uh, and by the way, an, another con, you know, the, these compacts have been around since the 70s. Um, in the last decade, they got pretty good to where it was hard for most people to even tell if you had one or not. But the early models were really ugly to look at. The light just didn't quite look right. It was a weird color. Um, now, within the last few years, we're in the era of uh, light emitting diodes, and this has been a huge revolution in, in lighting. So in an LED, there's actual uh, silicon chip. It, it's the same technology as a computer chip. And when the electricity flows through it, uh, it produces light. And how that happens is pretty complicated. We're just gonna kind of skip that part. But inside here, there's a bunch of chips and they're flat. And they're, in this case, they're, they're lined up horizontally and they're shooting the light straight up. Um, so then what they do is they put a diffuser on top to scatter the light in all directions. So that chip is called a light emitting diode. So this is called an LED light. They last a very long time. You can make them any color. They're very efficient. If you see an LED, you put your hand on it. It's, it's barely warm. Um, and they have been, uh, traditionally, LEDs have been very expensive to make. Just in the last few years, that's really radically changed. And now there's really no excuse not to switch your bulbs over to LEDs. I mean, 
I have a catalog from like 20 years ago when one single LED bulb was over $100. And now you can get like three of them for 10 bucks at Home Depot. And there, there's just tons of them out now. This is what an LED looks like if you were to take it apart. Here's the little chips. And they're oriented so that they fire. The light comes perpendicular from the surface. So this one would be like a spotlight. Light only goes in one direction, which is why they have to put a diffuser on it to scatter the light in all directions. But they're coming out with all kinds of things. So for example, there are now these bulbs that have this old school light bulb appearance with the filaments, but the filaments themselves are actually little tiny silicon chips. They are little tiny versions of this that light up and you can't tell the difference um, when they're lit up. I mean, most people can't tell the difference between the modern LEDs and the old, old style bulb, Edison bulbs. So this is really changing lighting technology. So there's, there are similar stories with, with a lot of the technology in our, in our homes. So for example, 10 years ago, a plasma television, a 65 inch plasma television used close to 800 watts. Now, the same size television using LEDs for the lighting, uh, 88 watts, right? Huge difference. And old computers used more electricity, old refrigerators used more electricity. We could go on and on through all kinds of technology. But in this class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some math with bulb replacements. And it's the same math that we've done before, but this time it's, uh, we're gonna swap out one bulb for another. Okay, so I'm going to do an example of a bulb replacement type problem. And they're pretty straightforward. It's just kind of common sense. Uh, you're, going to do the, you're going to do the math with the old bulb. You're going to do the math with the new bulb and subtract the differences. Okay, so let's say I've got a 100 watt porch light. And this thing is on for 12 hours a day. Okay, and I'm going to replace it. So this is incandescent, right? I should have wrote, I should have said that incandescent. Uh, I'm going to replace this with a 12 watt LED. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to my usage is not going to change. I'm just going to leave it on 24 hours a day. No, I'm sorry, 12 hours a day. Okay, so 100 watt light bulb, incandescent. For 12 hours a day, I swap it out with a 12 watt LED that makes the same amount of light, but only uses 12 watts, 12 hours a day. How much do I save in a year? That's the question, right? So how much do I save in a year? And we can ask this question several ways. We could, that could be coal, that could be CO2, that could be money. Okay, so solve for the old bulb, solve for the new bulb, subtract the difference. That's the easiest way to think about this, right? So the old bulb, I got, um, now remember on these problems, we gotta get to kilowatt hours before we can do anything else. So I'm gonna use my energy is power times time and I need to figure out how much energy the old bulb is going to use in a year. Okay, so in one year, oops, in one year, I've got the 100 watt light bulb, 12 hours a day, hours, times 365, and I'm just going to go ahead and divide by 1,000 to get it into kilowatt hours right away. So I take 100 times 12 times 365 divided by 1,000, and that gets me 438 uh, kilowatt hours. All right. Now, if you want to do it separate steps, you could. I just kind of did an all one thing there. Um, now, this is the old bulb, right? The new bulb is 12 watts, 12 hours a day, 365 days in the year. And I'm gonna go ahead and divide by 1,000 to convert it to kilowatt hours. And 12 times 12 
times 365 divided by 1,000 equals 52.56 kilowatt hours. Okay, so here's the old, here's the new, right? So I can do this. I can do this next math one of several ways. I will do it the way that I think makes the most sense, but if you know what's going on, you can, you can, you can alter this method. Um, what I would do, to just to make this easy as possible, let's say we're going to calculate how much money we save, right? Let's calculate the amount of money we save from doing this, right? The way to do this, again, more than one way, but the way I'm going to do it is figure out the amount for the old bulb, figure out the amount for the new bulb, and then subtract. All right? I think that's the most straightforward way of thinking about this. So the old bulb, let's say we're charged 13 cents a kilowatt hour. Right? If I use that number, uh, the old bulb, 438 kilowatt hours times 13 cents and the new bulb is 52.56 kilowatt hours times 13 cents right so let's 438 times 0.13 is $56.94 and the new bulb 0.56 times 0.13 is six dollars and eighty-three cents, and then I'm going to subtract the two. So the difference is fifty-six dollars ninety-four cents minus six dollars eighty-three cents. So fifty-six point ninety-four minus six point eight three is. Fifty dollars and eleven cents. Okay, so this is how much money I saved. So I calculated the dollars for the old bulb, the dollars for the new bulb, subtract the two. Okay, same technique to solve any other question. If I asked, okay, well, how much coal did I save from this? It'd be the same way. So let's let's just do that. Let's say I have. Uh, Coal saved, for example. Um, the old bulb, I go back to the kilowatt hours. I had 438 kilowatt hours. And let's do it in pounds. Okay. Um, how many pounds of coal is that? It's 2.2 pounds per kilowatt hour. Do that math. 438 times 2.2 is 963.6 pounds. That's the old one. And then the new one is 52.56 kilowatt hours, 2.2 pounds per kilowatt hour. So I take 52.56 times 2.2 and I get 115.6 pounds. That's the old one. And if I want to know how much coal do I save, how much coal do I not have to burn now because I replaced that one light bulb, um, the coal saved is the difference between those, which is 963.6 pounds minus 115.6 pounds and 963.6 minus 115.6 is 848 pounds saved. So one of the themes here, notice all I did is I took one single light bulb and I replaced it, right? That's it. Nothing else changed except that one light bulb. And by me doing that, I save 850 pounds of coal every year. 
So now imagine I did that to all the bulbs in my house. And now imagine everybody else in the United States does the same thing. And what happens is we start to realize you could save so much coal that we could actually shut off many coal-fired power plants. We wouldn't even need them. That's how much coal you could save by just swapping light bulbs. So once in a while, you might see a billboard. There used to be some in town. I haven't seen them in a while. And it talks about, you know, if every person just were to change one light bulb in their house, then, you know, X would happen. Uh, that's actually true. Because if there's 350 million of us in the United States alone, and we all just replaced one light bulb, then take that number, multiply it by 350 million, and suddenly you've got lots of coal that you're saving from getting burning going into the atmosphere. 